Salutations, dear friends, and welcome to my very first video of 2020. And before we get started, I would like to say a big old happy anniversary to my YouTube channel. And I never thought way back in 2014 when I made my channel that this was going to become a thing. <laughs> especially for me, who has uh, basically procrastinated and dropped projects when they got to be too difficult all of her life. So I never really thought it was going to go six years and beyond that. I made the channel in 2014 because I was dealing with some of the roughest times of my life and I just needed an outlet. I needed something, anything <laughs> to get myself through the day. And that was making videos and enjoying your sweet comments and having a lot of laughs. So here's to 20. 20, hopefully more of those things are coming this year. Now, a little disclaimer before we get started. I was completely inspired to make this video by Carl Sim Guides. If you've ever kind of got on Google and was like, how do I do this in The Sims? You probably came across one of their guides, but they also make videos and they made an excellent one on how The Sims can be fixed. I highly recommend after this video, you pop on over there and watch theirs. It is such a good video. Their video focuses on very large things that the game could change to make things better better, basically game altering things, my list is going to be more small things that the Sims team can change to make the game better. The first thing that the Sims team can do is clean up some of the old bugs. Oh my goodness, I have been with this game since September 2014. I pre-ordered this game stupidly and paid $70 for this monstrosity when it first came out. And I noticed quite a few bugs that have prevailed all these years. We're five years into the game. And if I can still replicate bugs from 2014 in 2020, you haven't really been keeping on top of bugs then because some of these are really, really prevalent and happen a lot. And you would think someone would sit up and go, you know, maybe we should fix these. Let me talk about a couple. So there's one particularly bad bug with adopting. And I know a lot of people don't adopt in this game. I don't understand why, but I did a whole series and adopt to see. I've adopted in some of my other challenges and series, so I would probably be the one who knows about adoption bugs because I've probably been the only one that's seen them. Uh, but uh, if you adopt a child and they load up in your like neighborhood, they're right outside your house. And if you click on them and go into CAS to change up their look and stuff, while they're not on your lot, they get deleted. And I don't know if they fixed that. The last time I tried was in like 2016, I wanna say 2017, and it still happened. So yeah, that's probably not been fixed or even talked about, but it, it needs fixing. Another problem I see kind of prevalently lately, especially since dying out was added, was people falling through the staircase. I believe, this is just my opinion, I believe this happens when too many people are trying to use a staircase and the game doesn't know what to do with all of them, so they just fall through the staircase, which is okay when you're at home. You know, you can break out the wall and save your sim. But what happens when it's a townie on a lot and you're there in a restaurant having a meal and you've got like five people underneath the stairs? This happened very recently in my Animal Crossing uh, Legacy Challenge thing that I was doing. We went out to a meal and there were a bunch of people falling through the stairs. It was not a good time. And I originally had that happen to me way back in 2014. It has happened over the years, many, many times, and it's still not fixed. And these are the only ones that I know of. I'm sure you guys out there have a lot more bugs that you have noticed year after year after year. There's probably bugs out there like the adoption one that very many people haven't noticed. So there are still bugs about old, old bugs that should probably be addressed. The next thing The Sims 4 can do to fix the game is to stop recycling content. I don't know about you, but I'm not particularly happy to get things that I've already purchased, repackaged and sold back to me in a different wrapping. Uh, I don't think anybody would say that their favorite items in the game are the ones they've been sold two or three times. Yeah, and can we talk about animations for a minute? I'm really tired of seeing base game animations repurposed over and over and over because it's quote unquote cheaper. Let's not forget that EA is a multi-billion with a B company and that The Sims sold millions and millions of copies. I think the last time they came out with numbers, uh, the Cats and Dogs pack just itself at that time, was a couple years ago, sold 800,000 packs. 
That is $30 million at that time. That's a lot of money. Where is that money going? Because it's obviously not being reinvested in the game. When we still get things that are from the base game repackaged and resold to us as a new interaction when it's really the same old animation. I want to leave that behind in 2019, please. Please, for the love of everything, make new stuff. Don't resell things that you've already sold us because that makes you look extremely cheap. We are talking about a AAA game developer. We're not talking about a shovelware developer. Let's talk about difficulty, shall we? Because I don't believe there's really anything in this game that is difficult or presents a challenge. Half the fun of other Sims games was trying to figure out how you were going to do something, whereas now it's not how, it's when are we gonna fit this into our schedule. I don't know that that's the best direction we should be going. I think there should be more difficulty in the game. I also think there should be more consequences in the game. If I make an enemy, I want that person to hate my guts, to never talk to me. If I'm on a lot with them, they come up and they cause a fight or they punch me. Something like that would add a lot of depth and character to the game. But as it stands now, everybody is happy and the sunshine and rainbows. You can meet your enemy on the street and they got a big old smile on their face and they're happy to talk to you. No. That's not how it should be. It should be that if you're an enemy, you don't call me on the cell phone and ask me out on a date because you wanna patch things up or I'm so spicy. There needs to be more difficulty. There needs to be more challenge. There needs to be more consequences for your actions. And right now, there's very little of that. I think this fits in nicely with my last point about difficulty. I think there needs to be more depth to the gameplay. And I know a lot of people say this and a lot of people are like, well, I get the concept, but what does depth mean to you? Depth means to me that there are a lot of things to do with the items that we get. Let me try my best to explain this with a simple analogy, a slide. A slide in real life can be used by pretty much everyone unless you're a teeny tiny baby. A parent can stand at the bottom of the slide and catch a toddler that comes down. Children can slide down it or sit at the top. Teenagers can slide down it. Adults can slide down it. It's good for the entire family and something a family can go to a park specifically to do together and enjoy. Now let's move that analogy into The Sims 4. Now I'm not saying we'll never get a slide for kids to play on and teenagers and adults. I'm just using what we have currently and trying to make an analogy. So what we have currently in The Sims 4 is a slide for a toddler and a slide attached to a giant jungle gym type thing for children. This is incredibly limiting to what you can do in the game. Whereas in other games, especially like The Sims 3, you could, except for toddlers, use a slide. Everybody could use it, especially like a pool slide and stuff like that. You had more freedom. Whereas in The Sims 4, there are roadblocks placed by the development saying, no, you're not allowed to do this. Let's take Void Critters, for example. There's no reason why teens and adults couldn't play Void Critters. And I know when it came in a pack that is considered children's room stuff, but... There was no reason why they couldn't. They can open the packs of avoid critter cards. Why can't they play? Again, it's a wall put in place by the developers saying, no, you can't play that way. No, we didn't want you to play that way. And that is very limiting. It makes the amount of things you can do and play very shallow. Whereas depth would be anybody can play with this. Doesn't matter what pack it comes with. There was forethought put into it and they decided that, hey, you know, this can go in a pack for kids, but you know what? Let's include the entire family in that as well because no one plays in a bubble. No one just plays with children. Children have parents, children have siblings. And you can tell that there is a lot of non-thinking that goes on with some of these packs. They don't think about the fact that if you brought something like void critters into a household in real life, everybody would want to play it. Everybody would want to sit down and learn and have fun. And to have it closed off, walled off and said, nope, this is only for children. No one else can play. It limits how people can play the game. And that is why The Sims 4 is shallow, whereas other games are deep. 
we need not just new items, we also need things that encompass a large variety of players. And right now, things are kind of in walled off gardens. If you want to play children, well, this is what you're allowed to play with. If you want to play adults, this is what you're allowed to play with. I don't like walled off gardens. I would like things to be open to as many different types of players as possible. This sort of fits with the last point, but we need reasons to leave the house. What we have right now are very small, isolated places we can go, and oftentimes that ends in frustration and awful gameplay. And let me explain. Say you're an adult and you and your best friend wanna go out to a bar. Well, what's gonna happen when you get to that bar is there's gonna be nothing there, unless you get something from the gallery, there's going to be nothing there but a bar and some couches and if you're lucky, a TV. So say you want a drink, well, good luck because there's gonna be about 10 people all gathered around this bar glitching out the bartender. You can see how that would be a very frustrating experience and you'd probably not wanna go back to a bar again. So maybe you wanna go and sing some karaoke. Well, you're gonna go to the karaoke place in the city and you're gonna be met with a bunch of people who are singing and are singing terribly. You're gonna have to wait in line to be able to even sing. Again, another frustration. Why not just stay home? This happens with lots of different lots. And I really think we need something spectacular that we can do that is not gonna be a giant annoyance or a waste of time. Like the art galleries, sure, go to the art gallery and be bored out of your mind. Well, what if you put an easel there? Well, I can have an easel at home and I won't have to fight with people over an easel just to paint. As you can see, things just, uh, I don't think the game was planning on having so many annoying pre-made townies in the world. I, I can really see that that is going to be a big problem with whatever they do. But sometimes you just want a solo experience. You just want to be left alone to do one thing. You don't want townies clamoring all over you to do the same things you want to do. So where better than just your house, you know? And I think that's why people don't bother going out anymore, is number one, there's not anything fun to do. Number two, you got to deal with other townies and annoyances. So why not just stay home and watch a movie? Why not stay home and paint? Stay home and drink? Stay home and enjoy your own karaoke setup. This game desperately needs something like hybrid lots, things that will function with more than one thing on the lot, things that will work together in tandem to give the townies something to do away from where you are. Lots of different options for you to say, go and have a drink if you want to, or go and read a book somewhere if you want to, and not have one item on a lot that all the townies are gonna flock to like seagulls to some food on the beach. And before people say, hey, use a generic lot, that was what it was made for, uh, no, I object to using a generic lot where you'll put a bar on it and it doesn't even have a bartender, so you have to serve yourself. And generic lots don't actually have townies, so if you wanna have the most depressing and broken experience of your life, use a generic lot. That's why no one uses generic lots. I think with a little more care and a little more thought, this game could be a very awesome game if they actually stopped being cut corners and actually gave us the content we wanted. We ask for things, then they're like, oh, here you go, you have them, but there's an asterisk there because we didn't think that you really needed anything more than just the basic humdrum, boring window dressing that this game is. So have fun, and then they wonder why people are so upset. You can't just give somebody something in a walled garden where no one can get over the wall except what you exactly want to play with something. And we really need more thought, I think. We really need more people to step up and go, wait a minute, maybe we should open this to more than just one life state so people can play how they wanna play, you know, how a life simulator game should be. So if you guys have any other thoughts, I would love to hear them down in the comments and I will see you guys in the next video.